Chapter 9, Tremulous I was standing outside Magnus's office, waiting for him to answer the door after having been called down for a meeting. Oh joy, I love our meetings together. Just me, which was a little weird by itself. I wonder if this is about my report yesterday. I had written that up after Ari and I parted ways in the evening. Yesterday... The memory of Ari's unexpected embrace sent a pleasant little flutter through my stomach. Nice. That said, I still felt a little bad about leaving out the conversation with Trent from my report. So I put in a truncated version of him mentioning us trying to mend things. No details, nothing embarrassing. It was more a footnote than anything. It might not have warranted mentioning, but the report seemed incomplete without it. I also mentioned it to Vaughn, and her outrage was enough to lighten the mood and help me be less frustrated about it. I was certain that was her intent. In any case, I doubted Magnus was calling me in to discuss my relationship woes. When the door opened a few seconds later and he popped his head out, he gave me the characteristic smile. Come on in. I entered with a little less trepidation than I'd felt during our last few meetings. Perhaps I was getting used to this place, or just getting used to him. He shut the door behind me and returned to his usual spot, leaning against his desk. Thank you for coming down. I know it's an interruption to your morning schedule. Ari was called away again, so he had already bowed out of our training session anyway. Not that I wouldn't still try to work on some things myself, but it was a little difficult when my teacher wasn't there. Even so, I apologize. It's not a problem. I hope there wasn't anything wrong with my report, though. Not at all. They've been quite entertaining to read. Entertaining? I don't often get free time. This is a bit like watching one of those romance dramas. Thanks. My expression couldn't have been encouraging, <laughs> you think? But he laughed anyway. <laughs> well... I suppose they've also been informative so far. You suppose? Anyway, that isn't the reason I called you here, as you can imagine. I would hope not. I'll get straight to the point. Last night, there were several illicit attempts to access restricted files in our archives. What? We believe someone here in the facility made them. And, of course, the list of culprits is slim. Exactly what files did this culprit try to get a hold of? Uh, records of Psy fingerprints for all members of Endgame. Mm hmm. He picked up a stylus from his desk, twirling it between his fingers with an idle smile on his face. Shall I tell you whose record they seemed most desperate to access? Mine. Please do. Sometimes he seemed to relish dragging things out and being coy about them. I was getting used to it, but it still irritated me. Yours, of course. Yours and Ari's. Because you're F-Class. My sigh fingerprint, huh? The same day he had declared me fully recovered from the fatigue episode, Dr. Sasuke had taken me to an observation room where I had to go through a series of tests to measure and record my sigh. The findings had been placed in their da- database of Psy fingerprints, along with those of every other agent in the organization. But why me and Ari? Ugh. I don't know if Magnus is coy, or if you're just very slow, Morgan. <laughs> because you're both- you just had a talk about the, ex the, the theories last night with your ex-boyfriend about why it's important and stuff, and you're like, I don't know why they want us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for at least thinking about it. Uh, I'm just losing my mind over here because it's so bad. <laughs> I need to calm down. Everything's fine. Because we're both F-class? That seems likely. Though it is possible, of course, they intended to access other files as well. The two of you are not the only two fairy espers in Endgame. And you don't know who tried to break into the system? They were quite clever about covering their tracks. Frighteningly so. 
What is terrifying is that we may not have noticed at all, even if they had succeeded in retrieving your data. Whoever it was knew precisely what they were doing. They got into the system without activating a single safeguard, and they didn't leave a trace of their identity. Then how did you find out they broke in? I just happened to be paying attention last night. But as soon as I attempted to engage the intruder, they terminated their connection. Perhaps if I'd been a little faster on the uptake, I could have caught them. And of course, you believe it was one of the three researchers. Magnus shrugged his shoulders as if the answer was obvious. Who else? Well, he wasn't wrong. It was too much of a coincidence for it to be anyone else. Unless that's the whole point, and the person really responsible just took advantage of the situation and the suspicion. Mm -hmm. But who knows? There's so many herrings around, I don't know which ones are red and which ones are the real herrings! Does that make sense? Probably not. So, one of these researchers is an expert hacker? It would seem so. But how would they be aware you were watching? I imagine you don't leave traces either. That's an interesting question, isn't it? You're right, of course. Under normal circumstances, I'd be quite undetectable to an ordinary hacker. Of course, if the hacker was an Esper, they may well have detected my presence in their sphere, rather than detecting me within the system itself. But it's strange since we did, of course, scan the three of them when they entered the facility. And none of them are espers. It's unlikely even an F-Class would slip past us. <sighs> Unless they're using some, this, like, drug technology thing that's untraceable. Which we've been theorizing about, maybe? But if they were using artificial psi, which happens to be what they're researching, bingo. You're so clever, Morgan. It's one of the things I like about you. Why doesn't that sound like a compliment? I wanted your thoughts on Trent Erickson. I don't think he would do it. You don't know that. I think he is just an idiot, but, I mean, it's all in my report, sir. Everything I've observed about him is in my report, Magnus. Perhaps. But I want to hear it from you personally, if you don't mind. Your reports fail to draw any conclusions. Because I've only spent one full day with him. It seems early for conclusions. But surely you have some thoughts to share about today's revelation? Trent is not a hacker. Unless he spent the last year learning the ins and outs of it, I don't think he has the skills to do this. Which doesn't mean he's not an accomplice. Of course not. But I don't think I would be comfortable making a declaration about that one way or the other. That said, if I had seen any behavior that seemed suspicious to me, I'd have mentioned it in my report. When we discussed his research, which he insists is for medical advancement, he seemed sincere. You did emphasize that he doesn't want his research used to do harm. I didn't emphasize that. I mentioned it because it came up. I only reported what he said. Magnus tipped his head back, the smile finally having evaporated, to be replaced by that icy demeanor he always took on when he was serious. You are aware it's all right to develop a personal opinion on this matter. You know him well. That's why we're having this discussion. You don't need to be so concerned about showing bias. I knew him, Magnus. Even I'm still working out how relevant that is to the current situation. <sighs> I rubbed my temple. If you want my personal opinion, all I can say is that if one of his companions came here with ulterior motives, I'm not sure Trent knows anything about it. Did either of his companions seem suspicious? I frowned, thinking back to the two of them. Gina seemed like a bright, unassuming girl, but Matt... I know, it could be Matt, but Matt also feels too obvious. So it could be Gina. Eh. Eh. I don't want to implicate anyone on the basis of a hunch. You are an Esper, Morgan. A queen rank at that. 
Your hunches are likely to be right. I don't know yet. I said the words firmly and kept my gaze steady. Regardless, it doesn't change that your files were accessed, as well as Ari's. And it was almost certainly that group, or one of them. So they were trying to get a look at the psi waves of two known high-ranked F-class espers. But if they could already replicate psi well enough to be able to detect Magnus, what were they aiming at with getting access to our files? There were also two more potential esper experiments captured on Sira. Both, like the first, showed symptoms of burnout without actually being espers. One had signs of multiple injections, so we're looking at a possible drug rather than a piece of technology. A drug? Hmm. Trent made it seem like their research revolved around technology, not drugs. It would be easier to smuggle a drug into the building than a piece of tech. Oh, most certainly. Yesterday, Trent said something about burnout. That trying to stimulate Psy in normal people tended to result in it. Correct. It's one of the reasons such research has been banned. But if that's what they're up to, and one of them stimulated their own Psy before accessing the system, wouldn't they also show signs of burnout? Perhaps. But perhaps they didn't utilize those abilities long enough to result in a burnout episode. Hacking a computer system while keeping an eye out for me isn't quite the same as utilizing Psy on a battlefield. But burnout is a spectrum, isn't it? They could show the beginnings of it without it being a full-blown case. Are you suggesting we examine the three of them? I'm suggesting it's one viable strategy. If any of them use some kind of psi-enhancing drug, there could be physical traces left behind. It may be difficult to come up with a reason to force a medical exam on Giss. It isn't as if Endgame hasn't done shady things before when they felt it was for a good cause. What a mean thing to say. It isn't mean, and I didn't intend it to be an attack. <laughs> You're so kind. What you said isn't untrue, though. We do what's needed. Always. Of course, we'll consider that avenue if another doesn't open up. If they know the archives are being watched, they may resort to other methods to record your psi waves. Or Ari's. Record my psi waves, huh? Trent said most of their test subject pool consisted of low-level espers and that the internal complexity of psi increases with rank. I guess they're looking for a simple way to get their hands on the psi information of higher-ranked F-class espers. That seems likely. Just about anyone in Endgame would be higher level than what they have access to. We don't make it a point to reveal the identities of most of our fairy espers. Ari, of course, is well known already. Your status was revealed quite unexpectedly yesterday. Sorry about that. Well, it was bound to come out. It's caused quite the stir. And it's made you a potential target of this group. When you say target, it sounds more nefarious than hacking files. There's no way of knowing what they're capable of doing to get what they want. In truth, we don't even know for sure what it is they want. The Council is considering this a direct assault on Endgame by this faction. As such, Endgame will be forced to take a more public stance on the matter on Sira. With more and more reports of the use of espers in the conflict, there have been stronger calls for our involvement here on Arcalis. It leaves us no choice but to launch a formal investigation despite the backlash. That's likely to cause heightened desperation for the dissidents, who undoubtedly need this research if they wish to win the altercation on Sira. For the time being, continue to focus on your assignment. It would be best if we could identify the culprit, question them, and put an end to all this as soon as possible. I understand. I'll do my best. You were dismissed for now. I nodded and made my way out of his office. Somehow, it felt like this assignment was becoming far more serious than I'd anticipated. After meeting with Magnus, I had to change and get down to the training room. Even without Ari, I wanted to get at least some work in. If only to avoid the disappointed dad look I'd get if I skipped out on it. Not saying it. Still not saying it. 
Because I was late arriving, other people must have decided the room was up for grabs. There were quite a few junior agents there when I arrived. Oi! Out, everyone! The infantry were on one end and several ranked agents were on the other. In light of what happened yesterday, I considered turning around and finding another place to practice, but I was spotted pretty much straight away. A chorus of whispers rippled through the room and I found myself entering to a crowd of staring faces. It felt like my first days at the organization all over again. Not wanting to seem like I was running away, I stepped in cautiously and looked for a place to set my things down. A small group of junior agents left almost as soon as I entered, leaving an open space behind. I set my things there, trying to ignore the feeling they'd left because of me. Unknown woman? Birdie, maybe? Hey, Morgan! There's my girls. A familiar and friendly voice called out to me, and I wasn't surprised when Birdie and Casey came over. It seemed like the two of them always came as a pair. Hi, you two. Birdie took a deep breath, and I held a hand up, stopping her before she could say anything. Because I knew what was coming, she had that look on her face. I don't mind talking about it, but... Quietly, please. Just because we discuss it doesn't mean the entire room should be able to listen in. I glared at a nearby group that was being a little too obvious with their eavesdropping. They all looked away and pretended to be working out. It was almost funny. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get it. I just... It's true, right? The thing about you being in F-Class? Well, you were right there when it was blurted out in the archives. Very loudly. Yeah, I guess I wanted to hear it from you. So you were hiding it all this time? I wasn't trying to deceive anyone, Casey. And it's not as if no one knew. But after my arrival, I was discouraged from telling others. So the higher-ups were the one who told you to conceal it. I guess they were worried about the reaction. I think the reaction would have been less negative if it hadn't been kept secret. So people are reacting in a negative way. No! We're not trying to say- The reaction isn't towards you specifically. But it is frustrating being kept in the dark, or feeling like you were deceived. And it's inevitable some of that fallout will be aimed at you, yes. The group next to us was staring again. To my surprise, a familiar face walked past and also shot a glare at them. Oh! Did our talk pay off? Are you defending me right now? Let's go! If you're going to stand there and stare, can you move? Some of us are trying to use the equipment. She glanced my way, and I caught the slight, slight flash of her eyes as she rolled them. Let's go! Anyone shaken by this great revelation wasn't paying attention. Not like it changes anything. She's just some newbie who can barely throw out a reasonable cyburst, much less do anything else noteworthy. It's not like there's a reason to make a big deal of it. Is she defending me? Sort of? She let out a very dramatic, annoyed sigh. Ugh, I'm out of here. I need to find a place people are actually working out, not standing around gossiping. She hopped out of the room, but I didn't think that remark was aimed at me at all. I'll take it. I smiled a little. She was such a brat, but I was grateful for that. The group she'd been talking to moved away from us and finally out of the room. <sighs> There was nothing to be done about it. Look, I, for one, think it's amazing, so don't let other people get to you. For the record, I wasn't trying to say I think it's a problem you're in F class. I know that. You're more concerned about the deception. It might be difficult to understand as an outs a new person, but people have some reservations about fairy espers. Three people on the guard, which is our highest ranking group of elites, are F-Class. As they become more and more prevalent, I think people are starting to wonder if there will still be a place for the rest of us at all in the future. That's ridiculous. Of course there will be. First, F-Class aren't going to become so prevalent in the next few years. 
Even though our numbers are increasing, it's going to take decades before F-Class Espers reach a level that can remotely be called commonplace. Second, even if there were a ton of us, do you think Endgame would turn their noses up at the rest of you for being N-Class? You think Heidi would get promoted to Queen and the Council will decide they don't want a second Queen rank because I'm here? Yeah, right. It's just, you know how it is. Everyone is always clamoring for the top spots, and there's a fear they're going to all be taken by F-Class Espers now. I guess I can understand that to some degree. But it doesn't always come down to brute strength, Casey. And F-Class comes with its own problems. It's such a new thing that we can't even guess what things will be like for us long term. Hey! You can't change what you are! And you aren't responsible for everyone else's insecurities. So don't feel bad about it. If anyone complains about it to you, you just tell me. Thank you, Birdie. Maybe we should get out of her hair for a while. I'm sure she wants to spend some time working on her own training. You don't have to. I mean, unless you want. Ari isn't even here, so... It gets boring if I train alone. Casey looked like they didn't want to stay, but after a while, the tension went out of their shoulders and they smiled. We'll stay. Yes! Since you're here, maybe you can show me some pointers on cybersting. It's something I still struggle with. I don't know if I'm the best teacher for that, but I can try. Casey, let's set up the target! Hooray! Friend training arc, let's go! Focus your psi waves towards the target more. You're still letting them spread out too much. That's why you're not doing enough damage. If the energy is too diffused by the time it reaches the target, not much will happen. I don't know how to focus it more! From my spot behind Casey, I set my hands against the sides of their face next to their eyes, blocking the view of the surroundings. Imagine there's a narrow tunnel between you and the target. Your psionic energy is emanating off your body like waves. Gather that energy up and push it through that tunnel as hard as you can to ensure it reaches the target. If you don't compress it down, it won't all fit in the tunnel. I can't see my psi energy the way you can, Morgan. You don't have to see it. Even if you can't see the psi waves like I can, surely you're aware of them on some level. That is true. So picture it in your mind and do it the way I told you. Right. I watched as they managed to apply what I said. The amount of energy emanating off their body decreased as they held their hands out and pushed it towards the target. Though they hadn't managed to do it perfectly, this time it struck hard enough to at least put a dent in it. Finally! Good job. Bertie grabbed Casey, wrapping them into a tight hug. That was great! Maybe you'll finally be able to catch up to me with your training. What do you mean, catch up? I'm going to leave you behind if you aren't careful. I doubt one successful cybers means you'll be leaving me behind anytime soon. If you keep using the technique I showed you, you should be able to get better and better at it. You're still letting the energy spread out too much, so you have to work on packing in tighter and tighter. I... Hey... It would seem you are, in some ways, a better teacher than student. Ah! What the heck? I jumped at the unexpected voice, having been so absor absorbed in watching the two of them, I didn't realize Ari had joined us. You're back. I sent a message, but it seems you were too busy to notice. I checked quickly, and sure enough, I'd somehow missed the notification. I'm sorry. I guess I was just focused on the training session. I can see that. He seems irritated. Yeah, I think we disappointed Daddy Ari. Ugh. Well, I guess I should have been working on my own training, but sometimes it was nice to help out someone else as well. Besides, helping Casey also let me see the errors in my technique when it came to Cyverse. And I'd had to demonstrate a few of them, so it wasn't like I hadn't gotten in any practice. To my surprise, Ari strode across the room and took my arm, steering me back to the door. Okay. My apologies, but Morgan and I have something to discuss. I'm afraid your... lesson will be cut short. 
Oh, no problem. I think we were wrapping up anyway. Thanks, Morgan. Seriously, this was really helpful. No worries. I'm glad I could help. I shot Ari an annoyed look as he didn't even let me stop to say goodbye. Ari, can I just... Ari! You don't need to drag me out of the room. You were supposed to be working on your own training alone, not helping others with their technique. Sometimes helping other people can still count as studying. Is that so? Teaching and learning are obviously connected. I wouldn't be able to teach something I didn't understand myself. So you don't need to be so annoyed at me. It's not as if I was playing around. I spent this entire time working. It did not look like work when I interrupted. We were working right up until Casey managed to successfully hit the target. <sighs> Ari stopped in the middle of the hall, tapping the side of his neck a few times before he spoke again. Why, why so agitated, bro? What's, what's going on with you today? I apologize. I shouldn't be... irritated. I believe I'm simply tired. I was hoping to discuss today's meeting with the researchers. Somehow, it was impossible to stay annoyed at him when he was always so quick to admit he was wrong and apologize. I mean, that helps. Alright, we can talk in my flat then. Come on. In my flat, I kicked off my shoes and left them by the door as I tugged my hair loose from its ponytail. Ari followed me only partially inside, stopping just past the small entry area. Something is off about him today. I noticed you have a bit of something here. I gestured to the corner of my eyebrow to indicate the faded bit of nano web there. A remnant of his earlier mission, I assumed. Just a small bruise. As you can see, it's almost gone. I pulled two glasses from the cabinet, casting a sidelong look his way. How are you getting so knocked around when you're just transporting people back and forth? These things happen occasionally, even on a simple transport mission. Not everyone appreciates our presence on Syrah. Sometimes they ensure we know by protesting at our transport sites. Despite our best efforts, things occasionally become violent. It's nothing to be concerned about. Right. You're going up to a world embroiled in violence right now and often find yourself in the middle of it. Definitely nothing to worry about. Morgan, I... should apologize again. For being annoyed about you helping Casey. Something about the tone of his voice made me stop what I was doing. I was startled by his sudden change in demeanor, the look on his face. Unsure? Upset? I... haven't been myself lately. I am... I am not sure it's simply fatigue. <laughs> Be neutral and stay where you are! No, he's sad! Go to him and comfort him. I left the kitchen and went to his side, worry gnawing at me. Something wasn't right. Ari, you need to rest. You can't keep pushing yourself like this. Why don't we ask Caleb to go with me today? I don't... Ari, I'm worried about you. I really am. Dawww. Oh. Cuties. I hesitated, then reached up to touch his face. He jumped, but to my surprise, closed his eyes and let out a shaky breath. Aww. He reached up and grasped my hand, pressing it more closely to his cheek. W what? My mind went blank at the sight of him standing there, leaning into my touch. He looked down at me, with confusion still clouding his eyes. I wasn't angry you weren't practicing. His voice was very soft as he spoke. I was... angry... when I saw you... touching Casey's face and being close to someone else. Oh dang, I didn't even think about that! Whew! This boy's got the jealousy bad! He's down bad for you, girl! And I... realize I shouldn't, that I cannot allow myself to feel this way. Even so, 
I can't seem to stop. I unconsciously moved my thumb across his skin, eliciting another trembling sigh from him. You're torturing this poor boy! <laughs> my mouth was a little dry as I tried to speak. It's not like there's anything wrong with having feelings. If I... His word, words trailed off and he swallowed hard. I have to stay in control of my emotions. Allowing myself to be so easily irritated or... Allowing myself to... Allowing yourself to what? He was leaning closer to me. Eyes lingering on my face in a way that made it clear what he was thinking. There's that blush. There was a small part of my mind that knew what was coming, and that wondered if it was wise. He was already he was clearly struggling with this. It might not be a good time. It never will be. Just go for it. But he wasn't the only one who had been battling growing feelings. I waited for him to move first, not wanting to force anything on him. Part of me didn't think he'd do it, but he finally leaned down and pressed a soft kiss to my lips. Let's go! Yay! <laughs> His hand slid up my back, pulling me closer to him. Yes! Woo! I'm so happy. Suddenly not caring about anything else, my hands moved from his face to the back of his neck, threading through his hair. I didn't even realize how much I'd wanted this until it happened. Ari's mouth moved against mine with slight clumsiness, as if he wasn't sure what to do. <laughs> but that somehow made the kiss even sweeter. When his mouth opened, the tip of my tongue unintentionally brushed his, sending a jolt through us both. My goodness, how scandalous. <laughs> Look at this! We got a blushing boy! Let's go! <laughs> we shook him. Uh, amazing. He gasped and, with astonishing abruptness, pulled away. He let out a shuddering breath. With his warmth gone, my apartment felt cold. Ari. Oh no. I shouldn't have done that. He stepped back once... Twice, and before I could say anything, he pressed one hand to his lips and walked to the door. No, stop! Don't go! <laughs> you goobers! Ugh. I apologize. I believe I should go. Wait, we should... I'm sorry. He teleported away? <laughs> oh god, that makes it even worse. No, he didn't just run away. He like ran away. Ugh. He's so scared. He's so scared of losing control. Ooh. My heart, my my, my whole my whole everything. <laughs> well, and then he was gone. I was left staring at the empty space where he'd been kicking myself for allowing that to happen when he obviously wasn't ready. Ah, you, you got into it. It happens. It happens. I stood there for what seemed like a long time before, a little numb, I moved to the sofa and flopped down. It took a moment to gather my thoughts. Right. First, I needed to message Caleb to see if he was alright going with me today. To my surprise, I got an immediate response. He didn't even ask why Ari couldn't go or what the problem was. He just said he would go and left it at that. Nice. Appreciate you, Caleb. And after that, I needed to get ready. As much as I wanted to stay where I was and wallow in panic, right? Ugh! What is wrong with me? You're in love, girl. I rolled over and pressed my face into the sofa. As if things weren't complicated enough already, why was everything always so messy? I let out a final groan and got up to have a quick shower before I left. Maybe the hot water would help me clear my head. But that ended up not being the case at all. As much as I tried to get myself focused for the meeting and how I might get some information from Trent's two companions, my mind kept going back to Ari. After that kiss, he had seemed so distraught. I couldn't help but feel guilty. 
Emotions were something he struggled with, and I could see him struggling in that moment. I should have had the wisdom to ignore my own wants and give him space. He had kissed me, but I could have moved away. I shouldn't have let him do it. I let out a long groan. Oh, I should have been neutral, maybe. I had just wanted it so much. And now I didn't know what to do about it. <laughs> Mood. Given how emotionless he could be, maybe he just wasn't used to feeling, well, anything. Had my being here thrown him off to that degree? I hated the thought that the cause of this was me. That I had thrown him off kilter. That hadn't been my intent. I had encouraged those feelings because I had wanted him to feel something, but maybe he wasn't prepared for that. Maybe I should have kept my distance. Damn it. But how did I undo what had already happened? How could I have known it would upset him? I placed my hand against the tile, tipping my head down as I let the water stream over me. Relationships were tough enough as it was, and Ari had some unique struggles. We needed to talk it through. If he had no experience with this at all, maybe it would help to be upfront with him. Communication is the key to any good relationship. I approve of this. And if he didn't want to go further, it would be best to find out now. It would be better to stop myself from getting too attached because it would hurt if I found out later on. Oh girl, please, no, not like this. There was a sudden drop in temperature, the odd sense of everything bending, and then, oh no, are you teleporting? Oh. Oh no! <laughs> This is way worse. Um, new skill unlocked. Summon boyfriend. <laughs> oh no. Oh, the secondhand embarrassment is too much for me. Um, well, I know you tried to run away, but Ari was standing in front of me like my thinking about him had summoned him out of the ether. What? Uh, I assume you're not, like, I know for, for sprite purposes, you have a towel, but I assume at this moment you don't have a towel. <sighs> right. Well, <clears throat> our bodies were almost touching as I stared up at him, brain grappling with the absurdity of what was happening. Ari was standing in my shower with me. The water was already soaking his shirt, but he just stared down at me as if he wasn't quite sure how he got there. For a long, drawn-out moment, neither of us moved. <clears throat> I cleared my throat, trying to figure out what to do or say, because I couldn't imagine he had teleported into my shower on purpose. Ah, uh, should I get you a towel, or... His eyes snapped to my face, a look of shock and embarrassment flickering over his features. And he vanished as abruptly as he'd arrived. Wow. Smooth, Morgan. <sighs> so was that him or you? <laughs> or both? I don't know who, who was responsible for this. I shut the water off, a soft groan escaping me. I stood there a long time, cold, dripping, and wondering what that had been about. Accidental teleportation? Ari, of all people? It's more likely than you think. I mean, I thought she had literally... I mean, I thought it was her. But maybe he'd been thinking about her too. And then that's the kind of like mi mixed up emotion random teleportation thing he was worried about. So hey, here we are. I spent the entire time getting dressed expecting a knock or a message from him. But no. Nothing. I mean, what do you say after that? I don't even... I don't even know where you go from there, guys. I sent him an awkward message asking if he was okay, but he didn't respond. You got more guts than I do, girl. Which suggested he wasn't. But I had to meet with Caleb and go check on Trent's team, so I didn't know what else to do. Oh, this is a new hallway. Worry was still gnawing at me when I exited my room to find Caleb coming down the corridor to me. 
And once more, I was struggling to push Ari from my mind and focus on work. I had to admit, I was nervous about working with Caleb, though he'd softened up a lot since my arrival. That didn't mean he couldn't still be a grouch. But he didn't seem all that put out about having to come with me, nor did he say much on our way down. Whatever was true about Ari and my relationship with him, it would have to wait. I did my best to not think about him and instead focus on the work at hand. All things considered, getting Trent to spill everything he knew about the Sierra Rebellion, if anything, would prove an easier task than getting my mind off Ari after all that.